Good day from ChemHelp ASAP. In this video, we will introduce some of the key features of CP time curves for drugs. Upon completion of this video, students will be able to define pharmacokinetics, distinguish ADME from pharmacokinetics, and describe how in vitro and in vivo studies help predict human pharmacokinetics. On the screen is a graph that relates the concentration of a drug measured as the concentration of the drug in a patient's plasma, CP versus time. This particular curve corresponds to a drug that has been directly injected into a patient's circulatory system, intravenous or IV administration. Note that the concentration of the drug is immediately high at the time of injection, then the concentration decreases as the drug is broken down or removed by different processes in the body. Here is another CP time curve. This second curve shows the CP of a drug that has been dosed so that CP at time zero rises rapidly before the curve peaks and then falls. This curve has the general shape of many types of drug delivery, but the most common delivery is oral delivery. So you can imagine the drug enters a patient's mouth, CP rises quickly, but not immediately, as the drug is absorbed along the gastrointestinal tract, and then CP falls, just like we see in the left curve. The study of how a drug or other molecule behaves within a living organism, as we see in these CP time curves, is called pharmacokinetics, or simply PK. Pharmacokinetics has many aspects, but includes the mathematical modeling of these curves. One of the terms commonly associated with PK is half-life, which provides a general sense of how long a drug will persist in the body. Since this course emphasizes oral drugs, let's look at CP time curves for a multi-dose oral drug. Here is a multi-dose curve for an oral drug. Each rise and fall corresponds to a separate dose of the drug. This curve shows five doses. This curve shows a challenge for drug discovery. Part of being safe and effective requires the drug to be dosed in a manner that allows the drug to achieve efficacious exposure in a patient. Drug exposure is another aspect of pharmacokinetics. The patient needs enough drug to realize the therapeutic benefit of the drug, but not too much drug, which may cause safety risks that outweigh any benefit. How does one gather evidence that a molecule will have a favorable pharmacokinetic profile during the discovery process? We use a combination of in vitro assays and in vivo studies. We have a few columns. The first is in vitro assays. In vitro assays are used to understand a molecule's ADME properties. ADME stands for absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. These are properties that affect the pKa of a molecule. While understanding ADME properties is helpful, promising compounds will subsequently be studied in animals for their pK properties. These are in vivo studies and provide more data for predicting human pK. If the molecule is advanced into the clinic, the human pK properties will be confirmed. Understanding human pK begins with the very first phase one trials. So this slide gives a general idea of when different types of data are collected on a molecule of interest during drug discovery and early development. We have now defined pharmacokinetics, pK, and distinguished pK, which is determined in vivo, from ADME which is based on in vitro assays. Finally, we have seen how preclinical ADME and PK studies help predict the molecule's human pharmacokinetics. I hope you feel more comfortable interpreting CP time curves and how they arise. Please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or leave it a comment below. Take care.